Welcome back to At Home with the Doggins is Waka Waka Yo. Uh, it is Friday as we were recording this. Muppets Haunted Mansion came out today, and we've already watched it twice. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, we loved it. Yeah, it was wonderful. <laughs> okay, episode over. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was very good, very good. Um, it was full of fan service, but not overwhelmingly so, which was nice. Well, it was basically like the plot was a thing to hang all the fan service on, both Muppet fan service and Mansion fan service. I am assuming that most of the people who support us, like the types of people who support me on Patreon, will have watched this by the time this Holy. episode comes out. Holy. So. But just in case you haven't, we are uh, getting into full, full, full spoilers here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I've been excited for this ever since it was announced. My one sort of trepidation going into it was like when they just announced the title and not much else about it, mm-hmm. like the title and that it was happening, there was part of me that was a little nervous, like, okay, but is it really going to be the Haunted Mansion, or are they just using the branding of the Haunted Mansion and it's just going to be a generic Haunted House story? Mm -hmm. Like, I I did not know if the people behind it were, like, real Haunted Mansion heads, or if it was just going to just be, it's the Muppets in a Haunted House, let's call it Haunted Mansion. Yeah. Clearly, I did not need to worry about that. No, of course, of course. They were very good at... uh, I feel like all of our concerns may have been assuaged once they announced that Kim Irvine was going to be showing up in this. Yes, when they announced a a Kim Irvine cameo. (laughs) Uh, And and what a perfect cameo she had, too, which which we'll get to shortly. Mm -hmm. Um, But on the one hand, it makes a lot of sense because I'm sure they knew this is going to be airing on Disney+. Plus. The types of people who are excited for a Haunted Mansion special were the types of people who watched Imagineering Story Day One. Oh, fully, yeah. So they will know who Kim Irvine is, and it will be a recognizable cameo to them. That was honestly the cameo that made the most sense. Some of the cameos were a little uh, odd. <laughs> Some of them you can have to tell. It's like, well, they're obviously in the family, so it was just easy to pull them off set for one day. They have shows on ABC, so, yeah. uh, like... I would be curious what the decision-making process was where they were like, uh, okay, let's look at all the iconic Haunted Mansion ghosts and we shall decide these ones will be played by Muppets and these ones will be played by completely random celebrities and then the hitchhiking ghosts will be neither. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I feel like they just took the projections like that they have... um... When they're haunting in the the, the mirrors. I wonder, because like they, they were some real CGI hitchhiking ghosts at the very end yeah. in a cameo. And I guess if I have one criticism of the special, it is that uh, it feels like a lot more um, post-production than in-camera effects. Although I, I was reading that apparently this was the first Muppets project to, instead of green screen, use like... Uh, those big digital backgrounds like they use on the Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. So probably a lot of it was in camera, but there are other parts where it's clearly like, okay, this is like, this is a visual effect, not a practical effect, Mm -hmm. which like, that's the one bit of classic Muppet dumb where this does not feel like a vintage Muppets thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, and again, I'm not anti visual effect. I'm not anti post-production effect. I, use them all i i understand them they are cheaper than practical effects they they are and there is like a time and a place for them it's not like you know like when they're used for their time and the place they can be spectacularly effective and i don't necessarily think they were poorly used here no no i just think that's like the one criticism i think a person could make of like well if this was a jim henson era muppet project they would have found a way to do all that in camera yeah. which May or may not be true, because I think if Jim had lived to today, he'd be doing amazing stuff with uh, digital vi- uh, visual effects and everything. Oh, fully, yeah. One of his last major projects was a 3D real-time CG puppet. Yeah. So, <laughs> other than the use of CGI and stuff, in, like, in terms of the characterization and the humor and everything, it felt very classic Muppets. And it felt very classic uh, Haunted Mansion. Yeah, it was like two great tastes that go great together. Yeah. <laughs> Just piling on fan service for two of our major fandoms. Uh, like, honey, is, is Mansion your favorite Disneyland ride? I would say so, yeah. And it, it's in my top five. 
these are not hot takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's it's it was I think the when you took me to Disneyland for the first time, even though I had been on rides before, it had been many many years since I'd been to a Disney whatever. I think you smartly figured out that the Haunted Mansion would be a good practical first timer for me, and it was really it really captured my brain in a big way. I mean, we have a coffee pod holder that is uh, themed after one of the tombstones from the front yard of the Haunted Mansion, which just kind of says something about... Yes, and uh, you're the one who purchased that on yeah, Etsy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a 3D printed... Um, yes. Uh, and of course, we're both big Muppet fans, so two of our fandoms being serviced very well in a in a fell swoop. And it was great whenever there was a moment where it's like, Here's the things you like from both of these things together in one place. Like using the ballroom scene, like having Wayne and Wanda and, and doing it like the classic ballroom dance sequences yeah. from The Muppet Show was just I, I, like as soon as I saw that, I was like, I can't believe I didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah. Or when Statler and Waldorf show up, but instead of the opera box, they're in the doom buggy <laughs> and... It, it was... But also in classic form, they have a brief joke, which they have to stop the Doom Buggy, as they occasionally do on the ride, because, you know, they had to help somebody other in or out, but they, they had the opening spiel for that, which was just all fucking hilarious. Yes. Yes, I could not tell, and I did not see in the credits, I, I, I could not tell, uh, it did not sound like it was any original Paul Freeze dialogue, and it definitely wasn't uh, the Exitensio version in California. I could not tell if it was maybe uh, Corey Burton or if it was just someone on the Muppet staff doing the... Uh, C Corey, Corey Burton does uh, the Paul Freeze ghost host during Haunted Mansion Holiday. Oh, okay. And he... Uh, and Which he, there was, we think that there was a nod to Holiday as well in there that we were trying to figure out. There was a potential nod to Holiday because there was like a Muppet monster who was like a this sort of plant creature... Who was not the exact same design, but was very evocative to me of the uh, the wreath monster yeah. in Holiday. That was the only thing I noticed that might have been a Holiday reference. Other than that, there were no um, the Holiday references that I noticed. But I know that like um, and, and uh, uh, Kirk Thatcher, who longtime Muppet writer and director who directed this special, was on the Muppet History podcast recently, mm -hmm. talking about development, and he talked about how like. Apparently, like, Muppet Workshop is a subdivision of Imagineering these days or something. I'm, I'm not 100% sure yeah, yeah. on the Disney corporate infrastructure. But when they were doing this project, they had access to, like, private Imagineering documents about the mansion and, like, like the show Bibles that, like, even the most hardcore fans have not seen mm -hmm. about the history and lore and workings of the mansion. So, yeah, I should not have worried that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that it wasn't going to be haunted mansiony enough, uh, but you know I, I I didn't know all the details going in. I I would not have put it past Disney to just put two names together, but not really uh, do either one justice because you know Muppets are often not done justice by Disney. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I think we both enjoyed Muppets now a lot, mm -hmm. but. Not a lot of it has really stuck with me. Uh, the cooking segments are the only ones that I can, like I will think back on really because I think it, it kind of hits some of that like well, it's it's hard not to fuck up the chef yeah. specifically. Swedish chef and Beverly Plume that that mm -hmm. that's uh those segments are fun yeah and like I loved the like, use of Uncle Dudley for uh, Miss Piggy's like you know uh, tips and stuff like that. Yeah, I liked the I liked the general conceit of the uh, lifestyle with Miss Piggy and just the random detail that her best friend is Linda Cardellini. Yeah, <laughs> like I liked the show a lot, but I remember the recurring sketches. I don't really remember individual moments from the show very well, and maybe if I rewatched it more, it would stick with me more. But like. I liked Muppets Now. I just, there was something that felt very uh, ephemeral about it, I guess. I mean, you you can very much tell this was designed specifically for pandemic viewing, basically. And I feel like, you know, that was the thing that kind of shattered over everything else, really. It was, 
I can't, I can't put my finger, and maybe it's just, like, the title literally is now, so it's, like, here, like, this is disposable entertainment, and mm-hmm. it will not stick with you. I don't know. Yeah. But it's, like, I liked the um uh the ABC Primetime Muppet series more than some people did. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was necessarily the best format for a Muppets series to do it mockumentary <laughs> style, but I appreciated... Like a try. Well, it's, like... I think it was the best. We we talk about how like uh, the the real shortcoming of Incredicoaster is like Incredibles on a roller coaster is a fine theme for a roller coaster, but it's not the ultimate manifestation of an Incredibles ride. Yeah. And I feel like Muppets Prime Time was like putting Muppets in a mockumentary is a great idea for a mockumentary series, whether or not it's the best version of a mm-hmm. Muppets show. Yeah, it, it's. It's always going to drive me bonkers about the fact that I feel like, you know, we may be getting a bigger Muppets revival, and it's just because the fact that Chapek is apparently a huge fan of Muppets more than, like, anything else, and that just drives me up the wall. (laughs) Yeah, for all of his... Chapek probably said, hey, guys, put this together (laughs) for for this special, although we know Chapek doesn't care about theme parks, so... No, no, absolutely. (laughs) But yeah, uh... So this special, I think, like, as much as I have enjoyed basically everything the Muppets have done recently, this was the first thing in a while that really felt like, yes, this is the ideal format for a Muppets thing. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, like, they've been trying to get together a Muppets Halloween special for decades. Yeah. And this is the first one. Like, if you don't count the uh, Vincent Price and Alice Cooper episodes of The Muppet Show. But why wouldn't you count that one? Because it's perfect. <laughs> well, those are both great episodes, yeah. but they are just episodes. Of, they're just episodes of the show. They are not like specials unto themselves. No, of course, of course. So, like, there have been like five hundred Muppets Christmas movies and specials, mm-hmm. and this is the first Muppets Halloween special, and it is a very good use of it. The other trepidation I had as we got closer to it is like okay it's clear that they are actually using mansion iconography so that's good at least but i got a little nervous i was like well they say they're writing three original songs but are they not going to use the actual song but uh another one i didn't need to worry about grim grinning ghost makes uh it's only sung once as like a bridge of the uh opening song Mm -hmm. uh but then it's used in the score very effectively. Yeah. And I think all the other songs are written to feel like they're part of the same sort of piece as Grim Grinning Ghosts. Yeah. Uh, and I also feel like the most expensive thing for this special was licensing uh, the cover of Dancing in the Moonlight. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> but it was a good cover. It was. It, a good, it, it really was, a, was, yeah. It was a good Electric Mayhem cover. Another thing I've noticed about both Muppets Now and this and some other recent smaller Muppets projects is... I feel like they're kind of downplaying Kermit a little these days. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're downplaying him so much as giving everyone else time to shine. And I don't know if it's partly because they're trying to, they're still trying to gradually dip us into the Matt Vogel Kermit. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure. It's, It's like, as long as he doesn't take up too much time, as long as we don't hear him talk too much, we can get used to him in small doses or I don't know. And, Here's the thing. I like Matt Vogel a lot. I really like his podcast, Below the Frame. And uh, I I realized during this, like, I think he is really good at uh, overwhelmed Kermit, mm-hmm. at, at, like, the sheesh sort of side of Kermit, yeah. like, the sort of muttering to himself about how frustrated he is with everyone Kermit. It's like, the yeah, it was, it was Piggy's idea. I, I think he has a better handle on that than he has of the uh I ho excited Kermit. Yeah, yeah. Um but uh but that but that's just my take on it. I, I love him and I love his work. Gonzo and Rizzo get to the mansion, they meet uh Darren Chris, mm-hmm. that musical Harry Potter himself. Of course. As the caretaker who would have been played by Don Knotts in the Eddie Murphy movie, but yeah. <laughs> was cut before production. Uh and he sings the song that is like, it's basically turning all the rhyming gravestones into lyrics, which I mm-hmm. thought was a fun way of... Uh, Very clever, yeah. Yeah, of, of, of paying tribute to the mansion and its lore. And, like, all the ghosts are celebrity cameos, including uh, Ed Asner, yeah. rest in peace. Um, celebrity cameos who don't really do anything. Uh, 
And then the singing busts show up to then bring it over to Grim Grinning Ghosts, and they are even less explicable cameos. <laughs> like, like... Pat Sajak. <laughs> Pat Sajak, not known as a singer. Ooh. And, like... It's all clearly post-production effect. Like, you see in the credits, like, they're all just, like, basically like we did for uh, Haley as Leota in Tony's Haunted Mansion video. You know, they're just sitting in front of a green screen with the makeup and everything, and they yeah. just put them in the scene. Like, yeah, Pat Sajak, not known as a singer. Craig Robinson does do singing in his comedy, but, like, barely recognizable in the role. Yeah. Like, Jeff Keighley, like, he's like a games journalist. Like, like... <laughs> Yeah. What 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 is going on with these singing bus cameos? And like there was such an opportunity for the singing bus to either be Muppets or for them to be I don't know, like Dapper Dan's like the Eddie Murphy movie did. Mm -hmm. Or like you know, does Disney have like a Jonas Brothers type band that they're like trying to promote right now? This would be I Oh, I'm sure they this do. This would have been a great time to like pop them as the the the, the five. So Yeah, yeah. like I, that would not have appealed to me, but I would have understood it. Yeah. <laughs> Or have it be like the, uh, like, I don't know if they were specifically waiting until they got into the mansion for, uh, for Muppets to be playing the ghost. Like, I don't, I don't know if that was part of the conceit is that the Muppets, is that like inside the, because like when, uh, they get into the mansion, Will Arnett has a line about like, everything here will look a little familiar to you. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and that's, that's sort of the wave away conceit for why, uh. All the ghosts look like people that uh, Gonzo and Pepe know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if they were just like, well, outside the mansion, they just have to be people. So it's like the the ghost cameos, like, again, like you, you got Ed Asner. Good to see him, but he barely does anything. You you got, you know, Trejo always popping up in Muppet Projects. Yeah, yeah. Always behind bars, it seems like. <laughs> you got you got Sashir. You got Alfonso. You get, You got like, it's like... I would like to see any of these people do something <laughs> like. Yeah. And, and I think you, you, you clocked it perfectly. It was like, you could tell this was made pre vaccine because everybody obviously was like shot by themselves and like, yes, uh, th this was shot during COVID time. So like we saw the COVID tester credit, credit. And, and it's like, that's dystopian. Yeah. Humans keeping distance from other humans. Although I'm sure the Muppeteers still had to get very close to each other, uh, but you know, I'm, I'm sure the Muppeteers are their own bubble right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, when they announced that Will Arnett was the ghost host, which is partially true. Yes. When they announced that he was the ghost host, I did that TikTok where I was doing Joe Bluth <laughs> lines for the Haunted Mansion. Did not realize the reveal would be that he actually is a magician, so that's probably part of why they cast him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In it. Um, they also, one of the things Kirk Thatcher said was that uh, this is not addressed in the special... But this was sort of the uh, the backstory they were conceiving as they were designing everything. It was like they didn't want it to be any one specific version of the Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted it to be everything from all of the mansions. Mm -hmm. So basically the conceit was that the same architect who built the New Orleans Square and Liberty Square mansions and uh, the Paris Phantom Manor, this was the fourth mansion that that architect built. Okay. So that's why, like, it was the same on the inside, but the exterior would be not any one, one specific. And, and, like he said, they specifically did not want the special to be the Muppets go to Disneyland and ride the Haunted Mansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because Muppets uh, go to Disney World already happened, and it's not on Disney+. Ah, uh, okay. Um, now seems like a good time to pop it on their friends, but I've been I've been saying, I said that on the D-list. He also talked about how a lot of Muppet cameos show up both as a uh, fan service and just as we didn't have a whole lot of a budget, so we have to use every Muppet at our disposal. Of course, of course. Uh, some of the characters don't really show up uh, in any noticeable way in person, but uh, like the stretching portraits, like Crazy Harry as the TNT guy was like a really, That's a good, good really one, good yeah. one. I, I like the quicksand guys being Link Hogthrob and Julia Strangepork and the... Uh, the Moopit Miss Piggy from 2011. Oh, very nice. Because uh, like I, when I saw them stretching, I was like, is it just going to be all the pigs in space? But wait, Piggy shows up in this later. So then the, the reveal of having it be the Moopit one was pretty clever. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did not notice this, but uh, 
I did not notice this myself, but according to Muppet.Fandom.com, uh, the gargoyle candelabras that are in the queue were uh, Manamana and the Snouts. Oh, fun! Which, fun. which I, I need to go back and look for that. Watch it a third time. Um, you're watching this for the fan service. Like, like, like that's yeah. that's why you're watching this. You're watching this because you like the Muppets and you like the Haunted Mansion and you want to see all your friends do all your favorite scenes from the ride. Exactly. And it delivered. Might have delivered a little more if uh, they had been more creative with the singing busts than just have random famous people <laughs> be them. But uh, <laughs> you know who would have been good Muppets to be the singing bust is the um, the... Although I don't know if they can use these characters anymore, like if there's likeness rights issues. There's that like Muppet bluegrass band who are Muppet versions of Jim and Frank and Jerry. Oh yeah, yeah. Because uh, like they they use they saved Electric Mayhem for the instruments in the Madame Leota room, which mm. which was great. Oh yeah, like wonderful. that was great. But I, I was trying to think of other like singing Muppets who would have been good for the singing bus. Of course, they they probably retired the Jim Muppet. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't want anyone else doing his voice, no, probably. Course. But uh, I mean, probably Brian. But that would be the only one I think they would let do the Jim voice. But well, they brought they did bring Brian back to be uh, Salmonella and uh, Doctor Van Neuter. So that was that that was nice that Brian got the special appearance credit. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also nice, like. Dave Goals is the longest running Muppet performer, so it's always great that he's still at it and still when he still gets a chance to shine. And this, like, even though it's mostly gags and fan service throughout, it ends up being a much better, for my money, a much better Gonzo centric story than Muppets from Space was. Mm-hmm. Like, because like Muppets from Space was like, you know, oh, lonely Gonzo uh, finding out about. Like, it was answering questions we didn't want answered about Gonzo. Yeah, yeah. We, always bugged me about it. Like, there are there are things I like in Muppets from Space, but uh, just on a central conceit level, I am I take issue with it. But this addressed that, like, like this basically addressed that uh, Gonzo is the whatever with no fear, so what is the thing he's scared of? And, like, what drives him to keep doing this? And... I thought that aspect of it was, like, it was kind of shoehorned in just to give this thing a resolution in some ways, yeah. like, ju- just to pretend this had structure, but it was still, like, handled more interestingly, I thought, than Muppets from Space. What other great cameras we got? Uh, Ralph as the organist ghost, of course. That was a good one. Uh, uh, Lou Zealand as one of Constant Hashway's uh, departed husbands. Oh, yeah, a, a lot of uh, uh, Constant's... Taraji B. Henson, Henson, just in general, was fantastic as a uh, Yeah, Taraji B. Henson, which, uh, like, her design was the current version of Constance, but they kept, like, the, the beating heart from the older, scarier bride, mm-hmm. which I thought was a really nice nod. Yeah. There was also, there was an appearance from a character who we could not tell if it was Rizzo or not. Yeah. Because in the credits, there was just Ballroom Rat, and I, I forgot to, I forgot to uh, keep track of who played Ballroom Rat. Um, but when the rat talked, it sounded like Rizzo. Yeah, kinda. But, uh, obviously, you know, Steve Whitmire is no longer with the Muppets. And that's the other thing. Like, if this was early 90s, it would have been Gonzo and Rizzo in the mansion instead of Gonzo and Pepe. But, uh... When did the shift from Gonzo to Pepe happen, would you say? So... Gonzo and Rizzo were like the duo for a long time. Yeah, because uh, they were. Because they... he was the one in in, Chris, in in Christmas Carol, right? Yes, in Christmas Carol, they were the co-narrators, and in uh, Treasure Island, they were. Uh, okay, yeah, they yeah. were a duo in that. And then even while Steve Whitmire was still around, like Pepe first appeared, I think, in Muppets Tonight, and then really was kind of. Either stealing the show or being forced into the spotlight, depending on who you ask, in mm-hmm. Muppets from Space. Mm-hmm. And, like, Gonzo and Rizzo were still the core duo of that, but Pepe had a lot of scenes. And um, uh, Griffin Newman had the theory that part of the reason he really popped as a character is that, uh, you know, Pepe was a relatively new character. So he was one of the few characters who was still being played by his original performer. Mm. And it's like, even... 
Muppets from Space, Frank Oz did the voice of all of his characters, but he wasn't on set puppeteering. Mm. Like, he just ADR'd everyone. Uh Uh-huh. So Pepe was, like, this new sort of spotlight stealer. And, uh... And then in uh, the the 2011 movie, Pepe has, like, one cameo. Rizzo doesn't have any speaking lines at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that was partly because they were trying to distance themselves from the the Muppets do a classic book. Uh Like, they were trying to go back to Muppet show format. And uh, I think, you know, like... Jason Siegel is a few decades older than it, or like a decade or so older than us. Mm-hmm. So his nostalgia for the Muppets was like pre Muppet Christmas Carol. Uh-huh. So in his mind, like the stuff where Rizzo was really in the spotlight wasn't like the real Muppet stuff. Uh, so I think, I don't think he was like deliberately ignoring Rizzo. I think he was just deliberately not putting him in the spotlight. Mm-hmm. And then in uh, Muppets Most Wanted, Rizzo has like one line about like, uh, you know, when when Walter is missing, it's like, we just had a whole movie about him joining the Muppets at the expense of some long-running beloved characters. <laughs> but now that Steve Whitmire is no longer with the Muppets, because Steve was Rizzo, and now that he's no longer with the Muppets, I think they've found a replacement for him, but they haven't really... Because, like, Rizzo has shown up in, like, crowd scenes, but they haven't really given him center stage so i do not know who the current performer of rizzo is and if this ballroom rat as it was credited is rizzo then i need to go back and look at the credits and see whoever that person is like i guess they're the new voice of rizzo i don't know yeah or the the new performer rather of rizzo i know i know muppeteers uh get sensitive about just being called the voice Mm -hmm. um does they on the uh the thing yet or I can't find, because on Muppets Fandom, if you click Ballroom Rat, it just goes to the general page for rats, Um, and IMDb does not have the credits posted in that much detail yet. I could also pull up the thing on Disney Plus and pause, and and, and go to the credits and pause it, so I can can head back to that in a second, but... um... Uh, but yeah, a lot of cameos of Muppets, both old and new, because because yeah. like yeah, they they had Wayne and Wanda, they had Marvin Suggs like playing skulls, yeah. <laughs> which was a lot of fun. But they also had like uh, Joe the Legal Weasel from Muppets Now. That uh, was a fun one. I was like, Gee! <laughs> again, as as much as individual moments from Muppets Now, I don't find particularly memorable. Joe is like maybe one of my favorite new Muppet additions. On I don't know if he's been in other stuff, but like his his bit in Muppets Now is always one of my favorite. Yeah, he he he's a good like a lot of um. Let's see, and then other human cameos like. So it's it's a Disneyland project, so of course John Stamos was going to worm his way in here. Uh, I don't like that man. Uh, accused creep John Stamos. Um, it could have been just any. The joke was just he's a famous person and Pepe's a star fucker, but uh, yeah. his his scene is brief enough. His. A lot of them are pretty. The human scenes are pretty brief. Well, and and again, especially I I, I keep harping on it, but the 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 graveyard scene at the beginning, like uh, the human ghosts all come back at the end and each get like one last gag, mm-hmm. but uh, but the singing busts don't come back, and 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 so odd, so odd. And again, the hitchhiking ghosts at the end were all CGI, and that easily could have been another Muppet cameo. But it wasn't. Okay, so let's talk about Kim Irvine's cameo. Let's do it. So uh, I heard, I think you told me about Kim Irvine's cameo before I saw the announcement picture. And in the announcement picture, she's wearing, you know, the CM made uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you just uh, said Kim, Ir- like, Kim Irvine's going to be in Haunted Mansion, for a second I thought, oh, are they going to have her be Leota? Because c- she's done it before? I mean, that would have been solid, honestly. Uh, but... But then I saw the picture. It's like, okay, no, she just works in the mansion. But still, that that makes sense. And of yeah. course, when it was revealed that Miss Piggy was Leota, it's like, well, sure, of course. Of course, yeah. Like, I have no objection to that. But the fact that Kim's cameo is in the Leota scene, it's, it's, it's like, given Kim's familial connection to... <laughs> given <laughs> that she is the daughter of the actual Leota yeah. and... <laughs> And the replacement Leota when they need new footage. (laughs) 
she she's addressed by name by Miss Piggy, like Kim, Kimmy, Kim, like Kimmy. it's basically like she's credited as maid, but it's basically Kim Irvine as herself, yeah, doing the mansion touch ups that she does in real life, yeah, and she's just like, yeah, like yes, madam, yes, madam. It's like the only way the cameo could have been better is if she like mumbled under her breath something like like Ugh, it's like taking care of my mother. <laughs> Oh, another great uh, cameo, not a uh, Haunted Mansion reference, but just a general horror reference is like when Gonzo's running down the hallway at the end, he runs past uh, Andy and Randy Pig from Muppet Classic Theater as the Shining Twins. That was so, that just, was fun. Just like, come, come play with us, Gonzo. Come play with us, Gonzo. Okay, Bruce Lenoyal played Ballroom Rat, so. Who is Bruce Lenoyal? I do not know. I'm, I'm guessing a uh, an up-and-coming Muppeteer. Apparently, he's frequently paired with uh, David Allen Barclay. Okay. Well, we will be uh, keeping an eye on Bruce Lenoyle's career and see if yeah. he's the new Rizzo or not. Oh, another gag early on that was just such a good uh, Haunted Mansion gag was after the stretching portrait. Like, they work in a, so much of the verbatim. He was a country bear. Oh, neat. Yeah, he was uh, Henry Dixon Taylor. I don't know which bear that was, but... Uh... Henry's like the uh, the MC of the country bears. Ah, okay. so, so he he was like the so he was the one inside the suit when the um the face didn't synchronize with the head motion. Yeah. And it looks like most recently he's been doing the voice of Pepe Le Pew. Really? Yeah. Huh. So he's he's a Muppet and a tune. Yeah. <laughs> Neat. Like Well Be This World of Dr. Seuss, Muppets Tonight, he was Swiss Cheese, uh Okay, so so he's been with uh Henson and the Muppets for a long time then. At least since like eighty nine it looks like. He just hasn't had a breakout role in the core Muppets uh See seems to be the case, yeah. Yeah. Well, if Ballroom Rat is Rizzo, uh good on him. Rizzo might have been someone else entirely too, and they just might not have credited uh I did see uh, that uh, Colleen Smith was one of the additional Muppeteers. Uh, Colleen, a, a favorite of mine on Spontanea Nation with Paul F. Tompkins, um, who, who I've met a few times. She's wonderful. But yeah, another good mansion gag that I just really loved at the beginning was uh, they do the stretching room scene and it goes dark and they play that that very specific scream sound effect that plays in the real stretching room mm -hmm. and when the lights come back on it was the goat screaming that was fun like, that, that was cute that was such a good like that's such a specific mansion reference cuz i always thought like i love the mansion i always thought that scream sounded maybe not weird but that scream definitely sounds very specific and Very much so, yeah. It, it just made sense coming out of the mouth of a Muppet goat. According to Muppet.Fandom.com, a public screening of Muppet's uh, Haunted Mansion was held on October 9th, which is uh, tomorrow as we're recording this. Ah. But it says was held. I'll be working. But uh, Where's it at? Cause maybe I can you know, skip over to that. I do not know. Let me check. The Disney Plus Stream Drive-In. It will be a triple feature of Muppet's Haunted Mansion the Behind the Attraction episode on Haunted Mansion, and the Vincent Price Muppet Show episode. That is amazing. Well, by the time you're all hearing this, it's already done. Uh, tickets are sold out. Tickets for the drive-in are sold out, but that's okay because you can't drive. That doesn't stop me before. It's hard to go into a drive-in without driving. You could just take a very expensive lift to a drive-in. I can borrow a bus. Stephen Wright had a joke about going to a drive-in movie in a taxi, and it cost him like three hundred dollars or something. <laughs> I forget the exact numbers, but this episode is mostly just us gushing about details we like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did like the design of like withered old portrait of Dorian Gray gone. So, like, that was actually that was a, solid. That yeah. was actually a pretty creepy design. It was initially, I just kind of thought if they used, like, a mangled up uh, Uncle Deadly puppet for it, but it was like, the more I kind of looked at it, I was like, ooh, scary. Oh, yes, we nearly didn't mention Uncle Deadly, like, the whole, like, like I remember people anticipating, is Uncle Deadly going to be the ghost host? But uh, having him be the uh, the wedding officiant for the latest Constance Hatchaway wedding, <laughs> I, just, I just loved him, like, rolling his eyes when he sees her. When he like, sees her, he's like, oh, here, here we go again. <laughs> and he had that great joke about, uh, like, six times the charms, they say, they being Henry VIII. <laughs> such a good, such a good... It was solid. Um, I also feel like the, like, you, you were noting that, like, that final chase scene 
where Gonzo has to like run up and grab onto the hook to open the attic. And you noted that that grabbing onto the hook seemed to be their way of referencing like the hanging room mm-hmm. without actually showing a hanging. Yeah, absolutely. Um, someone on uh, Tony's Facebook group pointed out that the only reference they, the only like really iconic reference they didn't seem to get in there was uh, the guy going "Let me out, let me yeah. out" of of the coffin, which they had some "Let me out, let me out" coming from doors, but not that iconic visual. But uh, I don't know. I also don't find that moment to be as iconic maybe as some other people do. I feel like there's some other ones that more pay off than that one specifically. Well, it's not like that moment has payoff. It's just an early visual in the ride, so I think it sticks with a lot of people. Because they also didn't really do the uh, the MC Escher room from the Florida mansion, mm-hmm. which, you know, we don't have out here. But uh, I, I guess they kind of homage that by having the hallway, like, twist behind Gonzo when he's running during that... Yeah. Awesome uh, sort of chase version of Grim Grinning Ghost Instrumental. That, that was fun, yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, him sort of like jumping to uh, pull down the attic door was like their way of evoking the hanging without showing a hanging. But also the climax being stopping a supernatural wedding. <laughs> <laughs> was that their way of referencing the Eddie Murphy movie? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> or is it just a coincidence? Which, yeah, Uncle Deadly as the wedding officiant, like, I know people were speculating, is Deadly going to be the ghost host? But, like, that was the perfect use for him. Oh, yeah. D- Deadly's good in small chunks, not in, like, larger bits, I-, I feel. And this was just kind of perfect for him. Yes. Um, And then this does uh fix some of the mistakes of the Eddie Murphy movie. First off, by having the ghosts stay in the mansion. Yeah. Even though they're not all seemingly happy haunts. Uh, but Will Arnett is a resigned to his fate haunt, I guess. The Muppets all seem pretty happy in there. Mm -hmm. And, like, Walter just absolutely simping over Constance even after she murdered him. Uh, but the other mistake it ends is, like, I always rant about the, the end of the, uh, Eddie Murphy movie has that gag where they're driving to the lake and, like, Leota's with them, and the singing bus are in the back of the car. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the last shot is driving away. Did you forget you have ghosts whose whole thing is hitchhiking? Yeah, yeah. So at least the final gag in this one is the hitchhiking ghosts. Uh, other than the post-credits gag, that's Statler and Waldorf in the Doom buggy. Yeah. Uh, not saying hurry back, but they had constant say hurry back. But the credits itself is just straight up the same as the 2011 movie's credits, except... In- Except instead of all dancing to Manamana, they're all dancing to Dancing in the Moonlight. Mm-hmm. But it it worked. It worked. I got to talk about the song in the ballroom scene. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, like, like I said, all the songs kind of feel like they were written to feel at home with Grim Grinning Ghosts. But that song kept dipping into, or that scene kept dipping into being a Be Our Guest parody, yeah, yeah. Which, which I appreciated. Like, Will Arnett is like, as the dining room proudly presents your funeral, <laughs> or, or, or whatever the line was. Yeah. And there are a couple of, there are a couple of lines in there that are straight out of Be Our Guest, and even before they get to all of them, the scene with the rats is, is like, uh, because because Will Arnett has a line about follow the candelabra. It's like, yeah, but it's it's not French and it doesn't croon. We did that in a beastly cartoon, <laughs> and uh, so it's like they they clearly deliberately aping lines from Be Our Guest, mm-hmm. but musically it just sounds like Grim Grinning Ghost mixed with the Muppet Show theme, to the point where like the end it's like. I forget the exact final lines, but it's the same cadence as the, this is what we call the Muppet Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's like, they're doing the pull out of like, instead of them being in those little arches on the Muppet Show set, they're in the arches on the balcony overlooking the ballroom, which was, again, just like two fan services for the price of one, (laughs) servicing two different phantoms. So yeah, I was happy with this. I was I was satisfied with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it it, uh, it did the things I wanted it to do. It pressed all the buttons. It did the man. It had the Muppets and it had the haunted mansion, and it treated both of those things better than some other iterations of those things treat them. Agreed. Uh, it felt very in keeping with the spirit of both properties. <laughs> it was a perfect synergistic merging of IPs. <laughs> You know, the kind of stuff I live for. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was fun and funny, and, like, the humor was 
in keeping like it was more Muppet humor than mansion humor but sometimes there's a fine line between the two and uh yeah all of my caution that it wouldn't really be a haunted mansion project was fully assuaged Mm -hmm. again we fully expect you've all seen it by now but if you haven't go ahead and watch yeah you get to watch stamos turn into a physical monster and not just the uh yeah (laughs) not not just the uh, alleged monster he is yes but yeah also, the other day, as we were recording this, Miss Piggy was on Carly Wiesel's podcast to promote the special. Yeah. And uh, Carly asked her what other attractions uh, the Muppets should go in. And Miss Piggy was like, well, we did do a pirate movie. <laughs> and, uh... I would love to do have them do uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, like, condensed. That would be wonderful. Muppets of the Caribbean. Yeah. They can reuse a lot of the, uh... Characters from Muppet Treasure Island. Yeah. Honestly, I, I will take Tim Curry over Jack Sparrow any day yeah. these days. But obviously, the real... And you know how they could incorporate him is that they could have him be in the bed. There we go. Yeah. There we go. But obviously, the real answer is Muppet's Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> starring uh, Statler as Lincoln and Waldorf as John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Just up in the balcony. <laughs> And Fozzie as our American cousin. <laughs> anyway, that's Muppet Haunted Mansion. It was fun. It go was watch it. It's very worth doing. It's, it's not going to be leaving anytime soon, so you, you got time to do. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's going to be. I think this is going to be, much like how Muppet Christmas Carol is an annual watch for me, I, I think this might become an annual Halloween watch for me. Absolutely, yeah. It's already been a twice-in-one-day watch, and I probably Most will watch. Most likely we'll do a third time today. <laughs> probably will watch it again before the season is through. Yeah. Probably not today, because I have to get ready for Scary Farm. Uh, but yeah, no. <laughs> but until next time, this has been At Home with the Dogginses. Later days, y'all. Later days. Later days.